potentials. I have potentials. I have potentials. And I have a destiny. I must become all oh, I must become I all I was meant for. With excitement. With excitement. And fulfillment. And fulfillment. You can say that for yourself. Say it again and again to yourself. You have the potentials, you must fulfill it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You must become all you are meant for with excitement. Hallelujah. And fulfillment. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is the restored woman. Hallelujah. Amen. And we give God praise for yet another edition as we have to fulfill that which God has given us to do. And I want to thank God for your life out there. I thank God for what God is doing in your life. And I thank God who has created us and chosen us to live at such a time as this. And I tell you what, we can't afford to disappoint God in this generation. So we're going to give God praise who has deemed us fit to be existing at such a time as this. So mm. I want to welcome you. And here with me I have my first daughter, Bountiful Jed. Can you greet us? Good, good evening. You're welcome, bountiful. And I thank God for your life. You're a woman, right? <laughs> <laughs> Potential woman. Hallelujah. Mm. So, tonight we continue as we look at a topic, sexual chastity. We've been dealing with that topic for some time now. And we've been looking at what the word of God said concerning our body concerning what the law said and the laws of God the truth is that there is no part of us that God has not given us instruction concerning every aspect of our life the word of God has given us instruction on how to live every aspect of our life our sexuality our finances our marriage our spirituality every part of our being the word of God gave us instructions on how to live as people of God. Now, I'm not talking about unbelievers, because unbelievers, the Bible told us very clearly that until somebody is born again, he's still living in sin. As far as spiritual things are concerned, they are dead to it, and they don't understand. So the first thing, everyone that have not come to Christ, I'm not talking about those that are not in church, because we have a lot of people that are in church who has not come to know the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. So we're talking about those who have given their life to Christ. What is the word of God telling us? We see people look at it, and we're talking about sexual chastity. They say, how is it possible for somebody to live like this? How can you live a clean life? How can you tell me that the Bible says I should keep my body in chastity, in holiness, in sanctification? Because that is exactly what the word of God told us in First Corinthians, in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. The Bible told us clearly that each of us should know how to hold our vessels, our bodies, in chastity, in sanctification, in holiness, not abusing it, and he talked about not living in sexual immorality. Now, how can someone live at such a time as this in this generation and still maintain that? We've been dealing on that. If you miss any of our episode, you can check that. So today, we're going to read the book of Romans chapter 7. Very quickly, Bouncer, can you help us with that? And I read in Jesus' name. Amen. For I do not understand my own actions. Wow. What translation is that? That's English crazy. Standard Version. Wow. Please continue. For I do not know what I want. For I do not know what I want. But I do the very things I hate. Wow. But I do the very things I hate. Continue. Now, if I do what I do not want to do. Now, if I do what I do not want to do. Hmm. I agree with the law. I agree with the law. That is good. That it is good. Mm -hmm. Continue. So now, it is no longer I who do it. No, it's no longer I who do it. Mm -hmm. But sin that dwells within me. All right. For I did not know nothing good mm -hmm. dwells in me. Okay. That is in my flesh. My God. For I had the desire to do what is right. Not that. Mm. But not the ability to carry it out. Okay. For I did not know the good I want. Oh. But the evil I do not want mm. is what I keep on doing. Wow. 
Now, if I do what I do not want, mm. it is no longer I who do it, oh my. but sin that dwells within me. Okay. So I found it to be a law that when I do right, mm -hmm. evil lies close at hand. Wow. For I delight in the law of God mm. in my inner being. In my but I see in my members mm -hmm. another law okay. waging war, waging war against the law of my mind oh my. and making me captive to the law of sin. Look that, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells within my members. Wretched yeah. man that I am, mm. who would deliver me from the body of death? Wow. Thanks be to God. Mm. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ our Lord. So then myself. So then myself. I myself. I myself. Serve. I serve. The law of God. The law of God. With my mind. With my mind. But with my flesh. With my flesh. I serve the law of sin. I serve the law of sin. God bless you, daughter. Mm. Now we are looking at something, and the person that was saying this thing was the beloved apostle Paul. <laughs> he said very clearly some explanation that some people of our generation has come to believe that there is no way that someone can actually live this. He has been born again. He has been sanctified. Yes, he, he has given his life to God, but he saw something he was struggling with. He said that he discovered something in him. For that which I do, I allow not. What he see himself doing is not what he wants to do. He said that what he wants to do, he don't see himself doing it. And what he doesn't want to do is what he see himself pulling himself to do. He sees something pulling him to do what he doesn't want to do. And if you have been a Christian and you have really given your life to Christ, you will discover that this is a constant war that you will engage in. You will discover if you really and genuinely want to serve God, you will discover that you don't want to do some things, but you see yourself doing it. Apostle Paul came to that point and he had to tell us exactly what his struggles are because until you own it up because some people have come to this point and they are telling you it doesn't matter what to do in your body your spirit is saved and that's the lie of the devil god is interested with what we do in our body and we said in the last in the previous episodes that the body is given to us for a purpose. And we saw it is so critical that the Bible says that whosoever defiles this body, that God is going to destroy him. Because this body is what? Is the temple of the Lord. Our body is the temple of the Lord. So why are we having struggles to do what we are meant to do? I want you to be rest assured that God knows about your trials. He knows about your struggles. He knows about what you are trying to do and what, is, what you do that you don't really want to do. Now, Apostle Paul had that struggle. And he began to ask himself, how? How can I want to do good and evil is at hand? Now we are looking purely in this area of sexual chastity, but it's applicable to everything that has to do with our flesh. When you get born again, it is your spirit that gets born again. Your mind is going through renewal as you read the word of God, as you know what the word of God said. It is helping you to begin to transform your mind as the Bible told us in the book of Romans chapter 12. This one and two told us clearly. He said we have been redeemed, we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Now why this struggle? For every man that lives on earth, for everyone that lives on earth, there is this struggle if you are a child of God. Now what is the difference between this, that is the struggle of the Christian and the unbeliever? If you have never given your life to Christ, you are living in sin. You have the nature of sin. All your nature is sin. Forget the religious things people try to do. The time they come to church and shout hallelujah, they go back and do all manner of things because their nature is sin. But if you have given your life to Christ, what is the difference? The difference is that even though you are giving your life to Christ, you are still in the body. And the body doesn't get born again. It is the discipline that we have of the Lord and the Spirit of God that helps us to do what? The Bible says, mortify your body. Mortify the desires of the flesh. And until you come to the place where you have received the discipline to
to mortify what your body desires. I see some people begin to talk about it as if they are boasting about the flesh. As if, yes, I have done do this. You remember the, 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 the story you just told us? In the Gospels, he told us how a man, two men came to the temple. There was one that was there that was praying by himself. Oh God, I thank you. I'm not like this tax collector. I, am, uh, I, I fast twice a week. I, I give alms. He was standing and praying. And it, yet that is a good example of self-righteousness. But Jesus told us about the other man who couldn't even lift up his head. He was but he was just he was, he was just praying and saying, Oh Lord, I can his hand and say, Lord, have mercy on me. I am not worthy of anything. The Bible says that that man was more justified than the other one. Because until you discover that in you dwells no good thing. And if you ever do any good thing, it is the Lord that empowers you. Paul was busy struggling to please God, and he discovered that the more he tries to please God, the more he says, I'm taking a new year resolution, the more he tries, I don't know how long it took him because it took him a lot of time. And let me tell you, every child of God who really wants to walk with God in purity, you must go through this struggle. And until you discover what it means to come out of this struggle, then you know what it means to really hold your body in sanctity. And I'm trusting God that as we look look into this word and then you look at the struggles if you are really uh, having a desire to please God in your body then I trust the Lord you're gonna have the understanding of what the word of God said and you can walk out of these struggles like Paul did because we see very clearly at the last verse uh, 24 25 say oh wretched man that I am that was a cry oh wretched man I am I am in need again I said I'm not gonna do this again I found myself doing it again he said oh wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from this body of death by the way that's the the, 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 the subtopic understanding this body of death that's our subtopic in the sexual chastity understanding this body of death you need to understand this body of death to know how to overcome the desires of your body and to please God as God requires you. Anytime you are living in sin, anytime you allow the desires of your flesh to carry you away, you know what's going to happen? You are a slave to sin. The Bible says that anyone that sins is a slave of that sin. And if you are a slave, you know what? The devil has a claim over your life. He has a claim over your body. And the Bible says if you declare that you are a child of God, how can you be living in sin? You cannot take the body of God, the body of Christ, that is the body, the body is the temple of God, and you go to join it with the harlot. You go to join it with, with, with someone that is not your partner. If you are a single person, you are expected to carry your body in holiness in spite of what the generation is saying, in spite of what is out there that is popular. The word of God has never lowered the standard for anybody. Now, if you are married, you are expected to stay with your partner that you made a vow to the Lord with and if you are cohibiting I tell you you are living in sin it doesn't matter what they give you I hear about some people that say they are pastors and you see them they are not married but they have somebody living with having children come on this generation I've never seen an insane generation like this generation you cannot kick against the word of God I still expect to work orderly and that is why we see a lot of people, you know, saying all manner of things against Christianity. Yet, the word of God has never lowered a standard for anybody. If you trust the Lord with whatever struggle you are only number one, you have to be truthful to yourself. You see Paul telling you that what he wants to do, he doesn't see himself doing it. And what he doesn't want to do, that is what he saw himself doing. And he began to say, oh wretched man that I am. Who would deliver me from this body of death? The truth is that this body is called the body of death. It can be redeemed. The Bible talks about the transformation. For those that will die before Jesus comes, the Bible says that the body, when the body dies at the rapture, at the last trumpet, when the trumpet shall sound, what happens? The Bible said those that died in Christ shall rise first, incorruptible, and those of us that our life will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, and this mortality will put on immortality. Hallelujah. And that is when death will be finally swallowed up in victory. Jesus has risen again from the 
death. He has overcome this body of sin, this body of death for us. He was the sinless child, son of God. He came and delivered humanity. And if you walk with the Lord here on earth, he can give you the power to live as a child of God. He can give you the power to walk away from your struggle. And that's what we are looking at today. How to walk out from this struggle. Paul said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Then he says something. Thank God. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is the Lord Jesus. He says, so then with my mind, I myself said the Lord of God. He knows the word of God. He knows the Lord of God. But he said, but in the, with the flesh, the Lord of sin. There is the Lord of sin. And if you are living in the flesh, if you read the book of Romans chapter 8, it tells you that those that walk in the flesh cannot please God. So some people are children of God, but they are living in the flesh and they can't please God. The Bible tells us very clearly the next chapter, that is Romans chapter 8. Can you help me read that? Romans chapter 8. He told us clearly that if you are living in the flesh, you cannot please God. Help me start reading from verse 1. God bless you. There is therefore there is no, therefore condemnation, no condemnation, condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That is for those, I'm talking specifically for those that are in Christ. Those who have made the Lord their personal Lord and Savior by experience. Not just by repeating words and lines of prayer. Those who have come to the Lord and told them, see Lord Jesus, I can't help myself. I'm a sinner. I want to be my Savior. Those that are in Christ, the Bible says there is no more condemnation. What does that mean? Some things will want to condemn you. But if you are in Christ, when those condemnations are coming, there is something you must know. When that verse said, there is therefore now no condemnation. Oh Lord, thank you for your word. Ah, the word of God is so sweet. When you realize and recognize that these things belong to you, you can walk out of your struggles. You can walk out and be clean in this corrupt generation. In this generation where we are, we are corruption, we are lost, are gripping people. You can walk holy. You can walk clean. Yes, you can walk out of it. You don't need to believe the lies of those that are telling you that it doesn't matter what you do. Just believe the Lord that this flesh cannot be change no you can live in holiness there is therefore now no condemnation for them who are in christ jesus that verse says those who walk not after the flesh have you seen it because apostle paul said in that last verse of that roman 7 he said in his flesh he will serve a law another law called the law of sin but if you are walking after the flesh you can't please god those who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Now, what does it mean to walk after the spirit? Let me try to explain it. Walking after the spirit is this. You are now born again. The conflict begins. Because before you gave your life to Christ, you are just a sinner. You, you, you live in sin. You drink in sin. You are swallowing like a fish in the water. You cannot deny sin. When you have been saved, you have been delivered from sin. Jesus is now your savior. The struggle begins. Because the things you used to do will want to present themselves again. And now because you have been born again, your spirit has now been activated and then you are alive. The struggle is, I know that the word of God said I should not indulge in sin. But the flesh is telling you that you have been doing this before. Then that is why some people that have had partners in sin to say, I'm not telling lies again. I'm not living in fornication again or in adultery again. Then you begin to discover that the struggle will be there. The temptations will now come. Temptations, we don't believe what the is for. I'm telling you, they don't know what temptation is. They're they not really tempted. They are living in sin. The temptation will now come for you to get back to live in sin. Now, tell me, tell you, if you live in sin, you deny the Lord. The Bible says you crucify him the second time. You are denying him. But the struggle is that I don't want to deny God. But my flesh is pulling me to this. Sometimes you say no, but inside of you, you are battling. Now, what do you walk in the spirit? When you now trust the Holy Spirit, and then you receive the power, and then the Holy Spirit helps you to say no, until you bring that struggle to God, and say, Lord, I want to walk with you. And the Spirit of God gives you the enablement to to say no to that partner in sin. To say no to that manifestation of the flesh. The Bible tells us very clearly. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Has made me free from the law of sin and death. It is the law of the spirit. 
that makes you free, that makes us free from the law of sin. Nobody can be free from the law of sin. Never will you be free until you begin to walk in another law. Praise the name of Jesus. Hey. I want to quickly read the book of Philippians. You can help me do that. Our time is so running. My God. Philippians 3.14 Please do. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. What is Apostle Paul telling us? Mm. Let those of us Let those of us who are mature think this way. My God. And if anything mm. you think otherwise yes. God will reveal that also to you. Mm. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Okay. Brothers Mm. Join in imitating me mm. and keep your eyes on those mm. who walk according to the example you have in us. Mm. For many, many of whom I have often told you, of whom I've often told you and now tell you even with and tears, you even with tears. Walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Oh, Jesus. Their end is destruction. Mm. Their God is their body. Wow. Is their belly, belly and their glory in their shame wow. with mind set on earthly things. Oh, yeah. But our citizenship is in heaven mm. and and it and it awaits a savior, mm. the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, nice. who will transform our lowly body, this lowly body to be like his glorious body, to be like his glorious body by the power, by the power that enables him to subject all things to himself. Hallelujah. Amen. That is awesome. That is awesome. That's the word of God. And there is something Paul said here that is very striking. He said, Let us therefore that are mature. Oh, verse 40 said, I press towards the mark for the prize. There is a prize. I tell you. He said he's pressing towards it. There was a man that was telling us before what his struggles are. But he understood the law of the spirit. And I tell you, if you bring your weaknesses to the Lord and cry out to the Lord and tell God, I don't want to be a failure in life. There are people that have walked through this life and they did not defile themselves. They, some of us have had the struggles before, but by the power of the Lord, they cry out to the Lord and he delivered us from this body of death. This body of death and then we walk to what Paul said after he has understood this law of the spirit, he continues to live according to the law of the spirit mm -hmm. and then he's able to say no to the desires of the flesh and he is pressing toward pressing forward to the mark, there is a mark that you must mark and then that is what you attend to, he said towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ, Jesus said for those that overcome it's a battle you need to overcome. Don't allow this sexual immorality to overcome your destiny. It doesn't matter how you may have been involved in it. Jesus can set you free. Never you settle to the lies that it doesn't matter. Oh, I can't help myself. There is a power that can set you free. And if you understand it, you begin to trust the Lord. The, see, Apostle Paul being delivered, he understood there is a law. And I'm not supposed to walk according to the law of the flesh. It brings me to captivity. But if I walk according to the law of the spirit, I begin to walk in holiness. He said he is pressing forward. And that is for everyone who really wants to serve God and reach the mark of the prize. That is a prize. Hallelujah. And that prize is what God is expecting you to stand before him. And he will tell you, well done, that good and faithful servant. You are a servant to the Lord Jesus. Don't be a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. That's sin. And he told us very clearly that there are people... This this one is very frightening. Look at what it says, verse 18. For many walk of whom I told you often. He has told it repeatedly. And now tell you, even weeping is something to weep about. Even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. The enemies of the cross of Christ are everywhere in our generation. You see the displays of those, the Bible says, whose end is destruction. Never you lose sight of that. Anyone teaching you contrary to this, telling you it doesn't matter how you live your life, your sexuality doesn't matter. Yes, God created sex. But now, there is an abuse of things. But God is calling on us who are supposed to be 
the light of the world. We have no problem with unbelievers. Their nature is sinning until they come to the Lord Jesus. No matter what they try to do, they are sinners. And then for us that have come to Christ, the Lord says we are the light of the world. Your life is supposed to reflect the nature of God. He said we are like a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He said we are the salt of the earth. We bring sorrow. And when our life that is supposed to represent the nature of Christ to show the world what a Christian should be. If we deny God, do what the Bible says. He said that even if we deny him, he will not deny himself. Will you deny the Lord? There are people who have not denied the Lord. Remember Joseph. Joseph fled. They took his clothes, he fled. He was in prison firstly, but he refused to deny the Lord. He said, I cannot do this wickedness and sin against the Lord. There are people like Rahab. Rahab was a harlot. She was a professional prostitute, but she realized and recognized the power in the Lord. She came to the Lord. Her life was cleaned up and she got married. I tell you that it doesn't matter what has been your struggle. Don't follow those who live. The Bible says their end is destroyed. Their God is their belly about their flesh and what they want to eat and drink and enjoy in this life. The Bible says that their glory is in their shame. They mind earthly things. Can you read again that verse 19 for me? I want to know what your scripture said about it. What the translation? Their end is destruction. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. Their God is their belly. They don't serve God. Their God is just what they will satisfy them. Hmm. Is that all? And the glory in their, and the glory in their shame. The glory in their shame. What they should be ashamed of is what they are displaying. The body is to be covered, is to be holding chastity, to be holding holiness. And then they are glowing in the display of something that they should be ashamed of. And the Bible says we shouldn't be taking it with such people as that. He said, brethren, be you followers of me. Paul was talking. And mark them which work so as we have. For an example, there are people living according to the standard of the word of God. And even though there may be few around you, I want you to know that there are people walking Paul said, and uh, brethren, be followers of me. And mark them. Which works so as we have for an example. For many walk, so many are living their lives, the pattern of their life, of whom I have told you often and tell you even weeping. He was so touched to the extent he was crying. I wonder what Apostle Paul would say to my generation if he was weeping at that time where people at his generation that were even said to be decent compared to my generation. He was weeping and giving an admonition for us not to walk like that, not to behave like that. My prayer for you today is that the chastity that God demands from his people that you will be able to display it by the help of the Lord Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. my prayer that you will not be found among those who live their life as if they are mocking the word of God because God can never be mocked the Bible says whatsoever a man so that is what he will reap I want to pray for you today and I'm trusting the Lord for an impact for a touch of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am trusting the Lord to bring it to the point where you really know that you cannot do it by yourself. And what he did for, for Apostle Paul in his struggles, he will do for you. And you see yourself walking in holiness and Amen. righteousness. You can repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your, word. for your word. I bring my struggles to you. I bring my struggles and I ask that you and help I me. Ask that you help from me. henceforth. From henceforth. May I receive. May I receive the help. The help that Apostle Paul that received. Apostle Paul received. That I will keep my body. That I will keep my body. In sanctification. In sanctification. And serve you. And serve me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to Jesus. pray for somebody that is not yet born again. You have not given your life to Christ. You say after me. Say Heavenly Father. In the, name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you tonight. Tonight, I receive. I receive you, you as my personal Lord as and personal Savior. Lord and and from today, and from today, I receive. I receive the power, the power to begin to live. To begin to as live a child of God. As a child of God. I pray God. that prayer. I pray the Lord to strengthen you. Amen. I pray the Lord to give you what it takes to walk away from the devil Amen. and begin to live a holy life. For everyone, those that have received the power to live, those that are children of God, are having struggles. The Lord keep you. Amen. The Lord preserve you. Amen. The Lord cause his confidence to shine upon you Amen. and be gracious unto you. Till Amen. I come your way again, this is Pastor Joy and this is the platform of the rest third woman. God bless you. Have a wonderful Thank evening. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The, the value of the feminine gender. Hey, My yeah. wife
Steph, Becky, and daughters Deborah, Daniela, and Destiny will lead in the vocals. And so with faith and confidence now, women sing. 